It is 7 o'clock. Speaking at 7 o'clock, by your phone meeting order, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first order of business, uh, item 1A, additions to the agenda. Do you have any additions to the agenda? Do you have any additions to the agenda? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if I was doing that. Oh. Um, I'd like to add a addition uh, request for uh, from the non-lapsing fund, not to exceed forty thousand dollars to make um, repairs to the high school and middle school um, heating systems. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second for that motion. That was second. Second from Mark to so let the board know we need a two-thirds majority to add something to the agenda. Any questions or comments before we vote on it, adding it to the agenda? We'll talk about it later if we do. Seeing none. Uh, those in favor of adding to the agenda, raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, we'll call that item 4C, work on high school, middle school, mechanical system. And get to it, we can discuss it and then see if we want to vote on it. Okay, any other additions to the agenda? <coughs> okay, thank you, seeing none. Item 1B, comments from visitors regarding agenda items. Good evening, any comments? <laughs> no comment. We'll hear from you shortly, though, right? Okay, sounds good. Okay, number two, chairperson's report. Uh, just a couple items. Number one, I'd like to thank the community for the tremendous support coming out and supporting the budget. And just to remind the board, there's a board of finance special meeting Wednesday night to consider our capital uh, requests for this year that we've already voted on at a previous meeting. Okay, moving down, item three, superintendent's report. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, we are going to start this evening <clears throat> with a presentation uh, from uh, two of our students at the high school. So I'd like to introduce, who will give a, a little bit more of a summary, our high school assistant principal, Mr. Patrick Gustafson. Okay, so give me one second. David trained me on how to And it takes a couple of minutes, though. So. Good wait time. Right, good wait time. <laughs> so I felt pretty good when I went to the house, all the stuff this evening. And I couldn't walk in and he's better dressed than I am. <laughs> so he's upstaging me. Tomorrow night, um, both of our students actually be in a concert for a chairman of your last, her last high school concert. And for Chris, it's his last concert of his junior year. And we're looking forward to that. <clears throat> Should I make sure I have that, have that on my calendar? Yeah. Tomorrow night, when I was just telling Chris, my son's final high school concert, my youngest son's final high school concert is um, Wednesday night at Conrad High School. And so I just invited my mother. She'll think it's a Broadway show. She's 82 and she doesn't get out much, so that's not a Broadway show. That's, that's the kind of fan you want in the audience. Right? Yeah. Yeah. She loves it. All right, so um, <coughs> as Missy said, I'm Patrick Gustafson, I'm the high school assistant principal. Um, I'm going to be talking to you tonight about our initiative, The Portrait of a Graduate, um, and what that means. And I've invited two students to, to, bring, some, to bring some life to um, Portrait of a Graduate and the five C's. And so first, I believe this is something that you might be familiar with. At the start of this year, um, we introduced Portrait of a Graduate, the initiative to our middle and high school teachers, because um, we're all in the same building, so with Tony and Tim and myself, we rolled this out to the, um, to the staff, 6th through 12th grade. And so we decided to look at portrait of a graduate based on, on five key areas. And we focused on the five Cs. So what does it mean to be a critical thinker, a creative thinker? Um, how are our students in the district communicating? How do they collaborate? What makes them empowered citizens? And so we rolled this out at the beginning of the year. and. Um, the goal, obviously, is if you walked into any classroom, and starting next year, if you walk into any classroom, kindergarten all the way up through high school, and you ask students, um, what did you do today? 
that demonstrated critical thinking. They would able they would be able to articulate exactly what they did, how they learned it, what they learned, um, and what it means to them as individuals going forward. So as a critical thinker, how are you taking evidence and data, and how are you analyzing it, and how are you coming to a solution? As a creative thinker, what input are you getting from people around you? Um, how are you creatively solving problems? How are you thinking differently than you have in the past to offer new insights into something? As a communicator, it goes beyond what it is you can say or what it is you can write. We have students that can communicate through their artwork or through their music. They can do a performance, and so as teachers, what are we putting in front of our students that give them opportunities to show their learning in different ways? Collaborators. Um, one of the things that was interesting was students talked a lot about how, the, that, how they have to learn to be better listeners so that they could be better collaborators with one another. And then finally, what does it mean to be an empowered citizen? So as you drove in today, you looked at uh, in the front of the road, every single one of our seniors is on sign. Right? In a sense, that's a portrait. Um, they're going to be graduating in a couple of weeks. Think back to when they were in kindergarten, or think back to your own kids, when you brought them to the first day of kindergarten. <coughs> that's where the portrait begins to take. That's the first day of the portrait being created. Every student is a blank canvas. Um, so those first brush strokes are when you bring your child to kindergarten, and you let go of their hand, and they walk and they get in line, and you're entrusting them to a teacher, to a classroom, to a school, to a district. It starts there. And then when our students cross the stage in a couple of weeks, they're going to shake Missy's hand, they're going to shake Tony's hand, they're going to be given an East Grammy diploma. Every moment in between is part of that portrait. And the five C's are alive and well in all of their learning. So I can think to my oldest son, and I can clearly see dropping him off at kindergarten that very first day, clinging to his mother's leg, crying, and then we have to pry his hands open to then gently push him towards class. And in his kindergarten class is where he met the girl that he married eight days ago. Eight days ago, he got married to a girl that was in his kindergarten class, and they were together all the way through elementary, middle, and high school. Right, and so his portrait ends happily, right? He met someone, he cultivated a relationship, he was friends, he married his best friend. So that's part of what we're trying to do with our own students through the portrait of a graduate. So, as you already know, we have two outstanding high school representatives. Our first speaker tonight is um, Tierney Iqbal. In a couple of weeks, she's graduating, and then in less than a couple of months, She's heading up to um, Boston College. And if you know anything about Boston College, as Tim Family reminded me today, it's one of the finest colleges <laughs> in America. One of our nephews graduated from Boston College. He's now running his own business in New York City. Um, so Taryn is going to talk to us about some of her experiences with the portrait of a graduate in the five C's, and then I'll introduce Chris. Thank you for the introduction, and um, thank you for the opportunity to be speaking to you tonight. Um, as Mr. Griffith mentioned, I'm a senior this year, and I'm going to go to Boston College next year. And to me, the portrait of a graduate really represents the standards that we should be holding ourselves to, and the skills that are necessary to develop not only throughout high school, but beyond high school as well because there are things that never go away. Going with um, critical thinking as uh, one of our five C's. Critical thinking is something that, it's a skill that you really have to have, especially now being able to read through news sources because we as students are emerging into the world as adults. We need to be able to make our own informed decisions and critical thinking, being able to examine things and really think for ourselves, that's something that becomes really important. And this has been 
implemented in my education before we call the five C's to five C's, going back to the first day we got like internet access in classrooms and we were told about different sources, about reliability, about really thinking for ourselves, does this make sense? Does this sound right? I remember doing like exercises with um, my teachers in the classroom going back to like fourth or fifth grade and being able to examine biases and think critically about what is the author trying to say and what are they gaining from saying this. And this is something that continues to be important through um, growing up and trying to access true information and make our decisions based off of that. This is something that I've done in fifth grade and I've done this year and I've done very recently doing research papers, doing any kind of inform informative report that requires you to look at information. As for creativity, this is another skill that we have been developing since we were young, going back with different projects because we know that students learn differently. What works for one student may not work for another. And all students and all people aren't necessarily going to be able to create the same things. And some people are more creative than others, which is why it's important to have different projects that enable and encourage creativity. This year, um, in lieu of a final, I've had to do a lot of projects. So in my AP bio class, um, my partner and I recently finished making a children's book that has to uh, explain a concept of AP bio to a child, um, to a young kid. So that requires that you know the information and that you're able to express it creative, create creatively. Even in my AP Cal class, which you might think is not much of a creative class, um, we have, instead of our final project, we have to make a game, or we have to make some kind of visual and creative representation of a calculus concept. So my group and I are making a game. And this is something that will help us in the future, because you can't look at all problems the same way, and you can't learn all things the same way. So it's a very beneficial skill to start cultivating now to look at the world different ways um, because not everything works for everyone. As for collaboration, this is something that, I'm, that I have personally worked on a lot because I used to be pretty shy and I never wanted to collaborate. I was kind of doing things on my own. But collaboration is a really necessary skill, um, as we all know, especially going into the workforce and having to make relationships that um, are professional. And you have to be able to work with people who you might not get along with all the time, or you might not want to get along with. But regardless, um, you need to be able to make compromises and concessions when need be, but also uh, learn how to stand up for yourself and your ideas if you believe in them. And this is something that I've worked on in a lot of my classes with a lot of group projects, being able to divide work efficiently, being able to take on different roles depending on your talents and what you're good at or what you might be weak in. And this, is all, this all starts very young being able to work with groups that the teacher makes instead of groups of your friends. And this is only going to serve us more and more as we grow up and as we eventually graduate. As for communication, um, this is another highly important skill and skill set. Um, again, because almost every job requires an effective uh, sense of communication and the ability to communicate your ideas because you're going to be working with different people all the time and you will need to be able to articulate what you're saying and be able to understand what the other person is articulating. And a really good example of that in my high school career has been in my junior year 
I took AP language and composition. And besides practicing for the AP test come May, a big part of that class is rhetoric and learning not only how to use it to persuade and communicate your point, but being able to understand it and recognize when you are being persuaded. And like I said about the point about critical thinking, this is something that's become really important, being able to understand what someone is really saying and being able to say what you really mean. And lastly, uh, being an empowered citizen. This is something that we have been kind of reminded of since we were very little, because I remember a field trip to like the state capitol, and I remember sitting in the room, and they were explaining what a jury is. And they were explaining that this is your kind of your civic duty, as well as voting. And being told and being explained about the government and politics, but also just community outreach in general, these are all components that go into becoming an empowered citizen. Because we come from this grand being a tight, close-knit community. So being an empowered citizen really means being involved and giving back to your community, to your neighbors, uh, to this place that we live in. And in the high school, in the elementary schools, that's emphasized a lot through not only community service, but also projects and perspectives in class that relate to the community and what we can do to benefit each other. So, so like I said, these are only some of the ways that the five C's are implemented in my uh, experience. And there's a lot more because as I mentioned, these ideas have been guiding my education since before we called them the five C's. And they're all things and components that shape us as people and make us better for it and help us emerge as uh, more capable and ready people to eventually join the workforce to pursue what we want to do in life. Thank you. Thank you. Nice Thank job. You. And Chair, that's part of being an empowered citizen is giving up part of your lovely evening to come and present to the Board of Education about your own personal experiences. Uh, the second um, student, uh, Junior Chris Lee, less than a week ago inducted into the National Honor Society. And when I asked Chris if he would come and speak to the board about it, I've never seen anyone more excited <laughs> about an opportunity to speak to a room full of adults. And um, he's really looking forward to it. So I'm, I'm anxious to hear what he wants to say. Thank you for an introduction. And I'm such an honor to be here with you guys today. And before like, I get started about my own, like my own interpretation of the three C, of uh, the five C's, sorry. Um, I want to know like, about your opinions, about what it means for you guys to be, empo uh, be empowered citizens, be able to communicate with other people, being able to uh, be able to be in this community. Like, what does it mean to you guys? Do you guys have any thoughts, help, any comments? I'll, I'll start. I'll, I'll share, and, and I think Mr. Gustafson brought it. Like we call this the five C's now, but they've kind of transformed over time. And you know, we've had these skill sets. And I can think back to you know growing up, and you know how was I as a collaborator, and where does critical thinking, and with my own kids, you know, raised up. And I, I'm just really pleased to hear because being in this um, school district for 15 years, I do see the elements. You know, starting in kindergarten, and kind of what they look like differently in each of the stages moving up. Um, any other interpretations that you guys might have? Well, I guess my comment is maybe it's not interpretation, but I, I'm impressed that you guys can internalize the five C's and, mm -hmm. and follow through with it, understand what it means and how it helps in your learning and everyday life. And I think us as adults, we, we've used them when we're successful. And if we failed, it was probably because we didn't use some of them. Yes, like I agree with every single one of you guys' comments. And for me, the five C's meant to me is being who you are. So like, it's a part of my identity, and it's a part of everybody's identity, for example, as well. And me from, I was not originally from East Grand, I was originally from New York City. And moving up here, I was 
empowered to become who I really am. But all the wonderful teachers in the schools, and I was able to adapt to this community because of all the students being able to understand my background of who I am as a person, not just because of my race, but like because I'm a human. Like, there's no other community I can ask to accept me as who I am, and I feel like that's wonderful. And being able to collaborate with other people, like right, right now I'm collaborating with you guys about why East Granby High School or East Granby's um, school in general is such a wonderful place for each and one of each and every one of single students. It's because there's you belong there. There is a certain place and certain uh, reason why you should be there. And because of the teachers making sure that uh, you're fully um, being who you are and being, uh, being understanding of why 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 you being there make them want to come to work and teach uh, different lessons and make it much more exciting for each and each and every individuals. And going back to what Tierna said about like empowered citizenship, like going back to my story, I, I was originally from China and moving moving here when I was six years old in uh, in the New York City uh, space, I was surrounded with a lot of people of my race instead of like different race. And I feel like that's actually really like intriguing because like me being here, I like I finally understand what's it what's in, what it meant to be American. And because of all the wonderful teachers and understanding many history lessons, like I finally understand why America's America today, because of all the freedoms and opportunities, and because I am like an American citizen and I can vote and be proud of who I am. And I feel like that's the agenda of America, being who you are. And I feel like that's such a wonderful place to say that I am American. And again, thinking about like crit uh, critical thinking, like critical thinking is not just one one aspect of something. It's more it's more generalized. It's more about thinking, what are you thinking? What am I thinking? Let's make a compromise of different things because many people have different perspectives of looking one way. So, for example, I am I'm willing to lend you. To, uh, $2,000 for something, but someone else might not. We can come to a compromise. Like, why Why is it not working out? And I feel like each of each one of you guys have different perspectives and looking things, and each, each of the students have different ways of looking at different things. And I feel like it's so wonderful to understand people's perspective because you don't know what's happening underneath that skin. And understanding their uh, thinking, it makes them realize that they're special in their own ways. And I feel like that's why college recommendation letters, and every time I ask teachers, because uh, I'm starting to go to college and uh, apply for college during my senior year, I'm asking my college, uh, my teachers for recommendation letters, and they're like, oh, like, you're such a wonderful student, and like, there's so much to write about you, and I feel like that's what college love, the drama, the environment you're in, the person you are, and that makes you who you are, and I feel like it's such a great, great uh, opportunity to be here, and it's an honor. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so, <clears throat> beginning this year, we brought the uh, middle and the high school staff together. We introduced them to portion of the graduate. We turned it over to the teachers. We turned it over to the staff. We asked them to do the same things that we asked our students to do, to brainstorm, to collaborate, to work together, to focus on the five C's. And at the end of the day, um, a goal was to make sure that every student in every classroom would be able to articulate, as well as uh, these two students just did, what it means to them about the five C's. If you're in a math class, or a Spanish class, or a French class, and any person walks into the room and says, talk to me about being a collaborator today. We want our students to be able to articulate exactly how they're taking that um, from their own learning and be able to talk to someone about it. And so we turned it over to the teachers. We decided that in the late fall, we were going to do one day, it was a portrait of a graduate day, in every single classroom from sixth grade all the way through 12th grade, the teachers focused on at least one of the C's. And they generated lessons yeah, in departments, they generated lessons in learning communities, and then they taught the lessons. And <clears throat> one of the products of that day was um, an example from our ninth grade English classes. 
it started with asking the students to do some free writing. And then from the free writing around, around the five C's, um, students worked in, in collaborative, um, cooperative learning groups. And they began to discuss what it meant for the five C's in their study of English. And from there, the teacher turned it over to them. And they started to generate descriptive lists of what each of the specific five C, what it was all about. And then they decided that the best way that they could demonstrate that was through doing something artistic and creative. Um, and so the classes put all of their ideas together. The ninth grade, there's five sections. So that's 70 students. They put all their ideas together, and they created um, word splashes for creative thinkers. If you look at it, right, there's creativity. There's inspiration. There's inventing. There's originality. They took all these things, they put them together. They talked about them. Um, they continue to talk about them. Critical thinkers, you just heard uh, Tierna and Chris talk about what it means to be a critical thinker. You're thinking inside of the box, you're thinking outside of the box, you're applying logic to situations, you're problem solving, you're applying strategies to different things. What do collaborators do? They talk, they trust, they listen, they work, they socialize. Communicators. They read, or they, they read, they write, they talk, they perform, they draw, they create, um, they express. And then students pointed out that there's a whole new way of communicating. Students can text, and they can get their ideas across in less than four seconds with their fingers and their thumbs, but they understand one another. Um, and so they're doing all kinds of communicating in and out of our classrooms. And then overwhelmingly, when we talk to the students of East Grandview about what it means to be an empowered citizen, it comes up over and over and over again. It's community, it's service to others, it's volunteering, it's being kind. And when you look at the high school with our work that we ask our students to do, you can't graduate unless you've done community service. Our students are turning in tremendous projects that each and every one of them has done. And they also have to do another project throughout their senior year. And then they have to make presentations about their learning and about their projects. And we're hoping that next year, when we take the portrait of a graduate and we bring it to the elementary schools, yes, as an administrative team, we'll work collaboratively, we'll work together. But as part of community service and, and part of um, senior projects, we can have our students go to the elementary schools and talk about a portrait of a graduate, talk about the five C's, teach younger students how to talk about what they're learning and why it's important to them. And then after, a couple of weeks after the portrait of graduate day, we surveyed our middle and high school students. And this is just some of what they shared with us. They really love listening and hearing what other students think about their learning. Middle and high school students saying, I like to hear what my classmates have to say about what they're learning. They said that they found it to be valuable just to know what it looks like to be a graduate. Sixth and seventh graders aren't necessarily thinking about what seniors are going to do when they cross the stage. What, is it, what does it take to be a high school graduate? They love the creativity of the lessons and the activities that the teachers create for them. Um, some of the students said that it was nice to begin to form a plan. I need to do this as a student before I graduate. I have to take challenging courses. I have to engage in my community. I have to play sports or join a club or be in the band or the orchestra. And then lastly, the students said that they like the fact that the creative lessons are the ones that are real world to them. Like the learning means something to them beyond just studying what's in the textbook. And so that's what Portrait of a Graduate is. Um, that's what our initiative is all about. And it's a district initiative. It's the middle and high school this year. And then as we plan over the summer, we'll be bringing it to the elementary schools. You heard that it's happening in all of our classrooms already. But now we have a focus. We know what we call it. And we know what we need to do to expand and make it grow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you too, very much. Thank you. Thank you. 
back on. And you can turn MD. Okay, update on student enrollment. Uh, in your packet, you did receive an update, and I just summarized on the bottom, so it's a little easier to follow. Since our Tierna, have a good have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Since our last report um, from March to April, there was no change, um, but with this May report, we do have a little bit of a change. At All Grove, we have one additional student for this current school year. At Seymour, we have two new fifth graders that will be starting in just a couple days. Um, at Seymour School and then for next year we have two third graders and one fifth grader um, that has already been registered and so those the numbers in the right side of this uh, graph here reflect those changes and if I'm moving on to 3C we do have one resignation uh, due to the, the timing and the end of the school year. I did uh, share the resignation via email. Brittany Ohalik is our one of our um, high school uh, English language arts teachers. She has resigned to kind of follow a different pathway. Um, we certainly wish her the best. She has been a, a great um, a faculty member for us. And we have already filled her position with a current staff member who was serving in a 0.8 capacity, which is um, just under full-time. So Julie Nunes will be taking the full-time position, um, and then we will be looking to hire a 0.8 full-time employment or somebody to teach four classes. And finally, 3D, there is um, each year we are required by the State Department of, Edu of Education to have a PDEC uh, committee, which is Professional Development and Evaluation Committee. And we had that meeting uh, about a week or so ago, and I did share the minutes and the PD opportunities from that meeting. There was one recommendation that came through that uh, Marjorie Light, who's our Director of PD and Curriculum, uh, and I spent some time kind of investigating um, to see kind of the need of the request and uh, should it be something that we're going to put forward. And in fact, it is. So the request was um, to increase the hours of professional development for our teachers and our staff. Looking back, we have had um, 40 hours of PD, professional development, for many years. Uh, we went down to 24 hours, 25 hours for the 2019-20. So we went from 40 hours to 25. And you know, depending on kind of what we're working on in district and what the requirements are and the mandates, that's perfectly acceptable. There's most likely reason. We are now at a point where we are don't have enough time to complete the PD not only the mandated PD through the state, but our district PD as well. For instance, we are implementing a new K-5 math program. We have social emotional learning. Uh, we have portrait of a graduate. We have new technology subscriptions. We're doing a lot more with PowerSchool, which is our student information database and how we track and support students uh, through kind of some intervention work. So what we what the committee has proposed, and, and just as a side note, we, um, looking at surrounding districts, are anywhere between 48 and 60 hours. And again, we are at um, 30 hours. So we are looking to start our first three days of the school year, which is a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And we would like to make those early release days. This way it does not impact the overall calendar, so that the end days stay the same, um, but it gives us three <coughs> partial days right in the beginning of the school year to do some of this important work prior to school. We also thought it might be a really nice transition for students. You know, if, if you remember with COVID, we started off on some early dismissal days, um, and we, we did get some really good feedback from parents. But there is another reason, and that is to help us with professional development needs. So if we were to accept that, we would go up to 37 and a half hours from the current 30. 
And again, we are um, still below our surrounding districts, but that would give us a nice um, start to the school year that would put us in good positioning. So if there's questions now, or if there's a motion later, if there's questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Sir, are you proposing the 31st, 1st, and 2nd, day for the tough days? For the short, short days, yeah. yes. Yes. So that'd be August 31st, which is the first day of school, and a Wednesday, and then September 1 and 2, which is Thursday, Friday. And those days precede Labor Day. So Monday is off, and then we would be back on the 6th. I think that's good timing starting off the year with professional development that the teachers will probably look forward to. You know, last two years, I think we've probably had to spend time, uh, lots of time on COVID. And I think a lot of these items are items that teachers will want to be using right away. So I think we need to do this right away. And that's all I have for my report. Thank you. And I'll just remind the board, especially new board members, if, if we were to do it any other time, it's a contractual issue. You know, we have so many days, we would have to increase the number of days. So when you can do it in the same day, we can make it work. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments? No? Okay, seeing none. We'll go down to item four, recommended actions. Can I get a motion to accept the resignation? No motion. Mike's motion to accept. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second with regrets. Second. Okay, with regrets. Any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried. Okay, item B, approve amendments to school calendar for 22-23. We get a motion and it could be some discussion if we want. We have a motion to accept that? I make a motion to um, propose August 31st, September 1st, and September 2nd as um, professional development days. That'll be a shortened school calendar You're instructional day. Right? Yeah. That's what we're changing is the instructional day. Okay. Yep. Do we have a second for that? I'll second. We have another second. Mm -hmm. Any questions, comments? Bob? Can, can we get this, you know, in terms of the details of what are what goes on in, this, in, in all those different fields that you said, the social emotional learning and the Power school. We know. I know a little bit about the, what you do on the the, the, the uh, math program K five. But are there any details to that, or how you're going to do it? Or <laughs> you mean what we would be looking at doing? Yeah. Yeah. So the state requires that mm -hmm. a certain a majority of the hours for professional development is job embedded. So we have shifted away from kind of the all group PD, although there still are particular mandates. So in the beginning of the school year, every single year we have um, child abuse and neglect. We have um, actually we've already added some uh, Narcan training. Um, we have sexual harassment. There's a number of mandated reporting um, PDs that staff need to do on their own on a yearly basis. We are also adding, so the social emotional kind of curriculum, we're looking to partner with our state department and a program that's called, um, it's called DEMS, but I'm drawing a blank on what the acronym stands for. It's a, um, a way of taking kind of dipstick approaches to where students are in terms of their kind of social emotional learning. We are also supporting our youth service department this spring with a survey to students. So once those results come out, um, the youth service, they haven't done a survey, they said in, in probably 10 to 11 years. So they asked us to help facilitate that through the schools, which we will be doing. And so once we have the results of that, we'll also have a good idea of where to kind of direct our focus. Technology, we're getting new um, view, view right boards. So there's some elements to that that will be, need um, some new instruction um, that has some different modules. Power School, there's a module in Power School which will allow us to keep track of interventions and keep all of our uh, formative and summative scores on students kind of in uh, one place so teachers can kind of access it more easily. Right now we are kind of uh, paper and pen 
and passing passing around you know the, the folders up so there's quite a quite a bit of um, you know new learning that we can certainly make great use of um, and then of course we're hearing a portrait of a graduate so does that answer your question mr. Loomis yeah mostly I guess so so the social emotional part really is a, a program the state has you're sort of Borrowing the, the state well, we're not that. required to take the state. <clears throat> we are part of a cohort this summer that is going to participate to make sure that that's the pathway to go. We have to have something, and the state right now has a free um, program that districts could apply, and we have applied and are part of the cohort three, which starts this summer. We actually were accepted to cohort two, but we just couldn't work it in the spring, so we postponed it to the summer. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay. All those in favor of the motion of going to those three shortened days for professional development at the beginning of school, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Thank you. Motion carried unanimously. Did I have a second? Do we have a second on that? Lynn had second. Lynn second did, yeah, Lynn did. Yep. Yep, Lynn did. So, okay, item 4C. We added uh, recommended actions to approve the work on high school, middle school mechanical system preliminary repairs. Uh, the preliminary repairs are, we're asking not to exceed $40,000 for preliminary repairs. Uh, we had a facilities meeting earlier tonight with Ray Carlson. And when I say preliminary repairs, because he thinks down the road, these preliminary repairs have to be done, but we're going to have to replace the entire system at somewhere around, I hate to say the number, 300,000, mm -hmm. somewhere in that range. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now we have the heat off in the buildings because the system is leaking like crazy. Uh, it is beyond its life expectancy. So that is one thing. And I think, John, you were on a previous building committee. You made a, made a comment earlier today. Back in the 2000, when they did a renovation in the high school, what did they do with the heating systems back at that time? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, because because there's some thought he thought they did in 2000, but I don't think they did anything either. So those, those things are really almost call them dinosaurs, but they're leaking like they're leaking glycol all over the place. Uh, we're collecting it, but now with new state mandates for heating systems by 2024, that's that's not going to be acceptable. So. Uh, you know, this is something we really weren't expecting, but it's something with the heating system. We, we always know where it's full of surprises, and it's disappointing to hear it. But so we're looking for the $40,000, and fortunately is we don't have to go and ask the town for any, any more money. We do have it in our non-lapsing account, which if the board approves, and that's what we're going to be asking tonight, is to approve going there and getting it, because Ray says this is the work that has to be done during the summer. He says a lot of the things they're going to refix, they don't know what the valve is yet till they look at it. And if it's if they're doing work during the year, working nights, and it's 11 o'clock at night, and they find out they need something, they don't get it for the next day. School's closed, so it's highly recommended. You know, we do it during the summer, so that's why we uh, had a meeting tonight. Try to get the board approval, take out our non-lapsing, uh, notify the board of finance of down the road the whole system is going to need to uh, be replaced eventually they do need to be replaced and this one has been there for quite a while so with that said any questions or comments or yeah. additions from the facilities committee yeah Lynn? i have some questions I'm sorry. is it did we have a motion did we have, did a, we have a motion i think we had a motion we i think motion. we just talked about it we need a motion. i want to make a motion okay. first in a second okay if we don't get a motion we won't talk about it i'll make a motion to request uh to use not to exceed forty thousand from the non-lapsing fund to make the repairs to the high school and middle school heating systems. Okay, we have the motion on the second, we have a second by Mark. Okay, Lynn, I'm sorry, go ahead. So is it just the high school? The heating well, high system? school, middle school, the high system middle system's school. the same. Okay. It's a system for both. So it's, so it's 40,000 this year and then 300,000 mm -hmm. in the not too distant future. Mm -hmm. Is there any way to replace the system now so you avoid the 40,000? Uh, not right now. We don't have the money. No, it sounds like also, you also have to go to, and, if I understood correctly, uh, just to try to get the bidding process in place and yeah. through to be able to get it done over the summer. Yeah. What would not, the timing is just 
yeah. timing's not, not working with us. Yeah, it's so 300,000 versus 340. Yeah. So the, the yeah. near term yeah. that we're talking about right now, the 40,000, would get us to that point where then we can then go in and do the work necessary to get the, the long term taken care of. And he says the 40,000 needs to be done, so it's not just a band aid that's going to be thrown away next year. That, that needs to be done regardless. But it does buy us some time, because right now we have no heat. We have air conditioning, but the heat's off. Right. And okay. he was calling it, he didn't call it a temporary fix, because he said it wasn't a temporary yeah. fix. It was a preliminary, preliminary fix to the future. So, oh, it would have, have to be done anyway. Yes. 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 Yeah. So it's, so it's okay. not like a, a yeah. 40,000. Yes. Yeah. 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 And the reason we're coming to you now is if we don't do it this summer, we don't have heat come fall. Well, you don't so. have a school opening. It's, yeah. it's that's that's the yeah. just going through it. Some of them are pipe repairs that are leaking. So, um, yeah, okay. that, so they have that, to be the pipes out. would be probably kept yep. in place even if you replace the handlers. Yep. And so those would need to be replaced and stop leaking regardless, okay. even for a new system. Right. Makes sense. And if I may just clarify, we, uh, on our last request, when we went to the Board of Finance when I'm lasting, we have this funding. So we already requested it from the Board of Finance. So we don't need to request it again. Remember, we made the request for HVAC. So we have this funding already that was requested. So it's already included in what we've requested previously, if that makes sense. No. Does it? Do we not have it approved by them? This isn't this this stuff. It's this forty thousand is new. Yeah, it's not it's not yeah. We requested uh, from the board of finance use of uh, non-lapsing funds. I have to go back in my my calendar to look, but we have the funding already that was mm -hmm. given permission from the board of finance. Oh, we've got the funding in the non-lapsing. Yeah, yeah, we don't need their permission. We just need our permission to. Yes, I'm sorry. I, I thought we were going back. I thought oh, people thought oh. we were going back to ask the board of oh, finance. Oh, we don't want to do that. No, no, it's we just don't the want board. to do that. No, you are correct. Thank you. I just want to make sure. No, that was a good clarification. I just said big sale here. before I went yeah. and asked them for the forty thousand. I think it was generic HVAC mechanicals before. Okay, yes. so we had. Yeah. What's up? I'm sorry. It, it was we just had it as generic HVAC mechanicals yep. before. Because we knew things were on yep. the fritz, we weren't sure exactly what at the time. Yeah. And so then he just got more in depth quotes to yes. break it out into pieces. I'm sorry, us. that was Ray Carlson. Yes. 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 And and so we de now have quotes and. Yep, I have a copy of them if you want no, to take a look at them. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Whereas before we were just sort of thinking in theory it was somewhere in that ballpark, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So yeah, he's going on just a bit. Some work. Yep. And now we've done our due diligence and through the committee. Yes. It works for me. Thank you. And Ray Carlson's uh, done an excellent job of bringing us up to speed. I will say there. some of being somewhat in the business, some of these quotes actually do look very well for us. Um, just, just some of these I'm just looking at. 10 horsepower motors with VFDs. And then the additional labor and stuff. Some of these are very good prices that I've seen. So. How old are they? I didn't look at the date. May seventeenth, twenty. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. electrical components. You got to get quoted every day. <laughs> That's yeah. pretty current. May seventeenth. Who knows? Okay. Yeah. Okay, anyone else? Um, it, it, if, if if we look at these quotes, it adds up to just over forty thousand. So you want to say not so at, to forty-one thousand? I noticed. So he did write total. 40,375, but he said he can do a little better on some of the yeah. sections, so he said not to exceed 40. So I took his word for it. And okay, because a lot of it's, it's pipe fittings and stuff like that, and, yeah. and you know, there's a little variability in <laughs> yeah, He did say that, but he, he thought he could bring it in less. Okay. So he did say that. That's well, why we did not okay. to exceed the 40. If we do 40, then we can have him keep his feet to the fire. So. <laughs> okay, anyone else? Okay, then I'll. Call for a vote on the motion. All those in favor of accepting the motion to take not to exceed forty thousand dollars out of our non-lapsing fund for preliminary repairs on heating system at the middle high school. Signify by saying aye. Raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. Motion carried. You can tell Ray he could start doing what he has to do. Okay. Very good. Thank you, everyone. Item five: agenda for future meetings. We've got a few, we've got a few, nothing yeah. new. I mean, I'll, I'll keep you up on student yeah. enrollment, of course. Of course. Yeah. Item six, comments from visitors. You made great comments. Now, yes, you, get you, to go, now you get to go home. <laughs> you had some good comments. Okay, adjournment, motion for adjournment. I'll move adjournment. John with a motion, John with a second. 
All those in favor signify by saying aye, aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.